Hey guys, it's uh, me, Mike Moe, my buddy here. Thanks for being patient. Get out of here, man. It's my turn in the spotlight. Um, thanks for being patient with me. I know you guys have been waiting over a week for this, but uh, as you know, Joey, Gaku, and I uh, just got back from San Diego Comic-Con where we had a blast uh, meeting all the fans and doing the panel and doing the signings. For those of you that were there in person at the panel or stopped by to see us and uh, get a picture with us and meet us, that was the uh, the coolest part of the San Diego Comic Con, just interacting with people who truly were fans of the show. It was great meeting you guys, and uh, we're glad that we could uh, meet and connect with you guys. Uh, so getting into the questions, the first one is from Ryan Miller. He asked, was the club built on a set, or did you rent out an actual club for this episode? Was it filmed in Bulgaria, and any funny stories while filming this episode? Ryan, the club was an actual club. Uh, not built for the for the filming or anything. It was an actual nightclub inside of a hotel called the Kempinski. And the Kempinski is uh, one of the bigger, swankier hotels uh, in downtown Bulgaria. So we actually took, um, I think it was a 12-hour period, and we got to use it for one day. So all of that stuff you see in the club, that was filmed over only one day. So we had to cram a lot of stuff Um any funny stories while filming this episode? Yeah. Well, one of the, a lot of the uh, soldiers, the American soldiers that you see that we fight, um, a lot of them are Joey and Chris's friends from the UK, and one of them is actually named Theo Chalmers. And for some of you guys that have been paying real close attention, Theo is actually the photographer behind all the amazing stills that you guys see posted on the page, the poster, just amazing stuff. So uh, Theo got to be soldier number one or I think it was number two, either way. Uh, so he was, he's not an actor, but we gave him some lines and he was really, really nervous. And because he was supposed to portray an American soldier, he kind of had to work on his American accent because he sounds very British. So one of the nights in the hotel, Theo was feeling pretty nervous. So I said, you know, don't worry about it. Just have fun. We're going to make you feel comfortable. And uh, me and Chris invited him to run the scene like actors would do before before filming. And um, let me show you a clip of that right here. <coughs> He's a big guy, but he lacks the speed. Hey, asshole, you want to say that again? I was talking to you, pal. Excuse me, I was just highlighting where he may be able to improve. Hey, Johnson, we got a couple of karate kids running their mouths here. Who are you calling kid? 10,000 says I lay you out in the ring. Ooh, Ken, Nani Atendayo. Hey, Kitayo. It's your funeral, buddy. buddy. <laughs> his, his American accent in the, that video you just saw wasn't that bad, but on the day of the set, on the day of filming, I think he might have gotten nerves or, or just natural. His natural voice came out, and he sounded a bit too British. So, a funny uh, tr bit of trivia is that the voice that you hear when Theo talks is actually Joey's. So that's a funny story, I think. Theo. You're a terrific photographer, but um, acting is uh, maybe not your main focus in life. <laughs> Next question comes from Matt Gibbons. He asks, um, the pacing and buildup in the club suggested that there was going to be a full fight scene. Was this cut for time, or are you not happy with the quality? If it is simply a time factor, will we see this restored in one of the future iterations of Street Fighter Assassin's Fists? TV or Blu-ray or art that you mentioned are on the way. Yes, the Blu-ray is on the way. Uh, October, late October, all the English speaking territories are going to get it. You guys are definitely going to want to pick that up. Uh, Joey, uh, Gaku and I debuted some of the new footage that is uh, exclusive to the DVD at uh, San Diego Comic-Con to a lot of excite excited fans. And um, you guys will get to see that full, uh, full extra episode as the uh, Blu-ray releases. So yeah, the fight. There is uh, there was actually planned to be a little bit more fight, but it was simply a time factor. Like I said earlier, we only had one day to film in that hotel uh, club scene. So we we were hoping to get at least one fight with uh, me and a soldier, but it just we just couldn't get it. We were actually lucky to even get that bit in uh, like with seconds remaining on our 12 hour time limit. So. Uh, I thought it was a good way to kind of end it, and as you guys might have noticed at the club after when we were drinking, and also the day after, you know, Ryu has 
some bruising and a cut, and Ken has some bruising as well. So it's just implied that we kicked all of their butts, and um, it was not only me, but but Ken got in there to fight too. Matt also asked, what was it like having the legendary Ono-san on set? Uh, Ono-san, before, before uh, Joey and Chris even contacted him, or Capcom for that matter, about having Ono on um, in our movie, uh, they had written him in and they had just kind of hoped optimistically that he would agree to do it and that uh, they would be on board. So they wrote him in and then after the script was done, they contacted Capcom and, and, and Ono-san and uh, they read it and they were happy to do it and Ono was a blast to hang out with. And he's, as a lot of you Street Fighter fans know, he's very eccentric, he's very wild and goofy. So Joey and Chris wrote his part in kind of with those characteristics as you guys saw. And um, he's not an actor and he doesn't have much experience, but to be honest, he really nailed the role. I mean, it, it might have took him a couple extra takes to get warmed up and such, but it's a... It's a tough situation when you're put on set for one day to act in front of all these extras, all the lights and cameras, and he did a fantastic job. I thought he was one of the highlights of not only the episodes, but just one of the more memorable parts of the entire movie, especially for uh, the, the diehard Street Fighter fans. So we actually ran into him in San Diego, and that was the first time we got to see him since filming. And um, it's always a blast seeing him in action, and whether it's in cosplay or, or just hanging out. Bruce Brown asks that the bar scene one can say is giving Ryu a glimpse of what he may possibly encounter on his warrior's pilgrimage. Not to say that he may frequent bars, but once he steps out into the wide open world, he will encounter people in scenarios that will serve to challenge and expand his worldview. Was this a factor in making this episode? Great question, Brown. Mr. Brown. Uh, I would say that, yeah, uh, Joey and Chris wrote it, but as I was reading it, it, it made total sense, not only in terms of mixing up the, the locations just for a fresh point of view and a fresh uh, visual effect uh, and also make it make it a little bit more a light moment. But for Ryu's character from this standpoint, I think the bar scene was really important to show that Chris, you know, Ken has been all over the world. His dad's flying him around. He's from the United States where it's more of a melting pot and he's exposed to all these things, whether it's technology or different types of people or different looking types of people and so, so when he steps in the club, you, if you watch it again, you'll see he's, he's right at home. He's, he's going and checking out the ladies, chatting them up and looking for a party. Whereas Ryu, his, this is his first time being away from, you know, Goken's dojo or, or one of the very few rare times that he's, he's not training at his dojo with Goken. So when, when Ken kind of suggests that he's going out of the town, Ryu's, first of all, he's saying like, what, what are you doing? This is not, this is not what we're supposed to do. And I think, number one, he's worried that Goken will find out. So not only being nervous, as soon as he steps in the club, he sees all these girls that are dressed, you know, scantily and all this drinking and partying in this dark nightclub. So he's kind of like, whoa, kind of trying to take it all in. And it shows that Ryu has, is really naive and he's like like a child when it comes to being exposed to things. So that was that was a big thing um, that was that the, that the movie was able to show. Kwok Vu Nguyen asks, why are you sad when you see Ken's father come and take Ken home? You wish you have a family? Kwok, yes. Ryu wishes he had a family. I mean, Ken and Ryu are the best of friends, and Ryu is uh, only friend and best friend since child, since his early days as a kid was Ken. So, of course, as we build up, you know, they had a, an argument at the lake where, where Ken's threatening to go home and quit his training. And then, you know, when, when Ken's father shows up, Ryu's kind of like, oh, what are you doing, you know? So once he kind of realizes that Ken might really be going home a little earlier than Ryu had hoped, um, it kind of makes him really sad because if he leaves... Who is he going to be with? I mean, obviously he has Goken, but, you know, he's more like a father figure, more, not, not like a friend. So, uh, yeah, Ken, uh, Ryu is very, very sad when, when he sees Ken walk off into the distance with, with Mr. Masters. So um, wouldn't you be sad if your best friend threatened to leave and was about to, and his dad came home, came to your house and threatened to take him home? So that's, that's kind of what Ryu was feeling when Mr. Masters came uh, that day.
Matt Leslie asks, how did Mike and Christian go about rehearsing these character building scenes together? And was the scene on the roof all acted out from the script, word for word, or was there moments of improvisation and ad limbing to make the scene more believable and moving? Uh, Matt, great question. The, the great thing about having such a tight-knit cast, um, not just Chris and myself, but all of the actors on set, whether we had scenes or not, is it is so much easier as an actor to be comfortable on camera when, when you're just comfortable with all the people that you're hanging out with all day. Um, I've been in situations where, you know, you don't like people on set and this just kind of gives you an uneasy feeling and it, it's hard to act um, with your best ability and your best emotion when, when you've got, you know, drama going on or whatever it is. But everybody on our team was awesome and so supportive. And Chris and I had, from the, from the get-go, as soon as I flew into Bulgaria and we met for the first time, we hit it off right away. So um, when you see Ken and Ryu, and a lot of people have, have complimented us on their camaraderie, it's not only Ken and Ryu as characters, but Chris and I had a, have a real good friendship as well. So I think that was a, a big bonus in terms of our performances coming off as it was genuine. So on top of the roof, it was mostly word for word, but there was a lot of there was a lot of things where, you know, not only on that scene, but Joey was, was super, um, he was super easy to work with as a director because if I had a suggestion like, oh, I feel like I could say this or it might feel more natural for me to say that, he would be all for making uh, the actors comfortable with what they're doing as long as it had the right reasoning behind it. So Marcus L. asks, is it possible that Ryu will evolve into evil Ryu next season? Well, I mean, he would have to, right? Because you guys saw a little bit of a glimpse of it. And something, this, the thing that made Ryu kind of bring out that purple haze, that dark Hado in season one was the fight between Ryu and Ken. And uh, Ryu was, was really hurt. And I think he kind of let the emotion of it all, uh, although he tried to fight Ken as if he was any adversary, because it was his best friend and because it was such a build up emotionally, I think that kind of got into him and it took, it took hold of his emotions more than he wanted to. And that's, that's how that dark hot started slipping out. So in season two, without giving away any spoilers, I think something really devastating or something really, really, uh, emotion provoking is going to happen if, if, if more of that evil side is to come out. I don't like this face here. He's, he's on the verge of succumbing to the dark shadow with those eyebrows. The next question comes from Thean Tran. Mike, the training action scenes were amazing with Ken's father, incorporating this boxing style into what they've learned from Goken. I was wondering how long did it take to finish the action scene and what each of you had to endure and overcome to make this episode end so successfully? Uh, thanks for the question, Thean, and also for your support through the months here. Uh, I agree that the action scenes with Ken's father are awesome. Mark Killeen, the actor that plays Mr. Masters, when we were starting to rehearse some of the stuff that we we're, you know, throwing around, he, the, the, the speed and the power he's able to punch with is literally amazing. Um, he used to be like a champion boxer and like an undefeated bare knuckles fighter. So this guy is not only huge and, and ripped, but this guy is a serious, he can pack a serious punch. So because of his abilities, we were able to, you know, expand on more of that pad work that you guys saw. And um, we didn't have to train him. He, he came with an ability uh, in boxing, which was a bonus. Uh, it didn't really take us long because, again, this recurring theme of we didn't have much time. Um, I think that whole thing only took a few hours because that's all the time we had. The last question that we will do for this Q&A session is from Isaac Lee. He asks, will we see a full sparring scene with Ryu and Ken versus Goken that was shown in the official trailer? Good eye, Isaac. Uh, a lot of you guys may or may not have noticed that there's a scene in the trailer where you, Ryu and Ken are, are going two-on-one versus Goken and you know, Goken does that uppercut, the anti-air punch right to my chin, and that's not in the actual series. But that was done on purpose by Joey and Chris uh, because 
we wanted people to know that what's in the series is not the complete series. As Joey announced a couple days ago at this the Comic Con Street Fighter panel, the DVD Blu-ray will contain a full, I think it's 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minute epilogue trailer or epilogue episode. Um, so that conclusion that a lot of you guys have been clamoring for may or may not um, be explained or be resolved. So make sure you check it out. The first three minutes of it was shown at the panel and uh, that fight scene that you're referring to the, or that sparring session was shown as well. So that that was one of the more exciting days of fi filming uh, fighting wise. So um, to be able to have that as a DVD Blu-ray exclusive is uh, pretty special in my opinion. So make sure you guys uh, pre-order it right now and uh, pick it up when it comes out at the end of October. Well, that'll do it for my Q&A session this time around. Thanks again for all of you guys' support. Uh, we all really appreciate it. I know that I speak on the entire team's behalf in that uh, we wouldn't be able to do any Street Fighter live action without you guys. So thanks again, and talk to you soon.